Hi everyone. Uh, we will now start with our discussion of the frequency response of single stage amplifiers. So in this lecture, we will mainly talk about the two frequency dependent small signal models of the MOS device. The first one is what is shown here. It is the transconductance amplifier model, wherein the drain to source current, the current flowing from drain to source is proportional to the gate to source voltage. So the drain to source current ID here is given by GM times VGS. So this is the well known the conventional uh, transconductance amplifier model which accurately captures what happens in a MOSFET device. Of course we are also going to show the capacitors here. Now what we will do in this lecture in addition to this is that we will also develop a current, a current controlled current amplifier model. So meaning the, out the drain current here instead of depending upon VGS the gate to source voltage will have a dependence on IGS, the gate to source current. Now the reason, the motivation behind developing a model like that or trying to trying to uh, rewrite the model in that format, the reason is that the analysis becomes very simple when we go for common drain amplifiers. So when we use a current control current amplifier model, the analysis of common drain amplifiers becomes much simple. So that's the motivation behind that. And we'll very quickly see how do we go from a transconductance to a current controlled uh, current amplifier model. So first, uh, so to quickly uh, discuss this model itself, the frequency dependent uh, small signal model. So we have added capacitors here. And uh, so since there are four terminal, a MOS device is a four terminal device and capacitance is usually between two terminals. There are totally four C2 combinations possible. So that will be six combinations out of which CDS, the drain to source capacitance and CGB is not, the gate to bulk capacitance is not shown here. So these two will not be uh, figuring in, in any of our uh, analysis that we will be carrying out in the next few lectures. So then if I remove two, I am left with four combinations, four possible capacitors. So out of which, I mean out of these four, I mean all the four are shown in this uh, small signal model. So CGS and CGD are the gate to drain or gate to source capacitors and these capacitors are the metal to semiconductor capacitor with oxide sandwiched in between and CDB and CSB are the reverse biased uh, PN junction depletion capacitors and all these capacitors again they will vary from different regions of operation and they are also functions of the bias voltages. Now what I have shown in this model is the same small signal model with bulk at AC ground. So generally the bulk terminal in a MOS, N MOS device is connected to the lowest available potential. And generally it's assumed that there is no AC signal present in the bulk terminal. So at least in the analysis that we will, be, at least the circuits that we will be analyzing, uh, we assume that the bulk is at AC ground. So therefore the capacitor, the drain and source capacitors will be referred to ground. So we will have two capacitors CSB and CDB referred to the AC ground. Okay. And I am not discussing R0 and GM here, we have already discussed that. So I am not talking much about them. So then the more popularly used common source configuration where source and bulk are shorted together. In that case, we will only have three capacitors left. The CSB will be uh, non-existent here because bulk and source are shorted. So CSB will not be present here. So you will be left with only three capacitors. So now uh, I will discuss the main uh, topic which is uh, the current controlled current amplifier model. So now uh, if when you consider the low frequency model, there is no capacitors in this. So there are no capacitors. So there is no CGS. So therefore we said it, it made intuitive sense to represent the drain current as GM times VGS as a function of the gate to source voltage because the drain current was the gate current ID IGS was zero. But now once we introduce a capacitor, there is going to be some finite current. If VGS is finite, then there is going to be a frequency dependent finite current IGS. So then can we represent this MOS model in terms of the, the drain current uh, of this MOS model in terms of IGS. So we can obviously see that IGS and VGS are related to each other. So I can very easily write IGS by SCGS which is I, I mean 1 by SCGS is the impedance of the capacitor SCGS that times current will give me VGS from Ohm's law. 
So then once you know VGS, the drain to source current IDS is simply GM times VGS. So this is ID, IGS by SCGS is nothing but VGS. So I'm going to take the ratio of IDS by IGS and call it as the current transfer ratio and beta of S. Sorry, the current gain, I'm going to call it as current gain and that will be beta of S. And that's given by GM upon SCGS. So we have now, we now have a small signal model for a MOS device as a current control current amplifier with a current gain given by, it's a frequency dependent current gain given by GM by SCGS. And now it makes intuitive sense because if you assume S is 0, that's a DC, beta of 0 is infinity. So it should give you an infinite current gain because your gate current is 0 but still you'll have a finite drain current. So the current gain has to be infinity. So when you plot this as a function of frequency, uh, it, it's going to decay down at the slope of, it's going to reduce at the slope of 20 decibels per decade. So you can see that the current gain uh, transfer function actually has a pole at DC. And the point where it becomes equal to 1 is what we call FT or omega T here is GM by CGS. We'll talk about the significance of omega T in circuit design when we go to the uh, practical design of amplifiers at a much later stage. So right now I'm just going to introduce some intuitive techniques to analyze circuits. We'll go to the actual design at a much later stage. So this will be uh, the frequency response of, of the current gain of a MOS amplifier. So what we discussed here is that the DC current gain is infinity, but as a function of frequency, we can write the current gain of a MOSFET as GM by SCGS. Why do we do that? We can compare, we can then compare a MOSFET to a BJT, which is, which already has a well-known current control current amplifier model. So for example, if I ignore the capacitors, we are already aware of the small signal model. Uh, we can directly say your collector current IC will be beta times IB where beta is a finite number here. But for a MOSFET, we cannot define like that, uh, define a relationship like this at DC. For a BJT, we can. But for a frequency dependent, we can define a, uh, the current gain as a frequency dependent value for even MOS as well. Now, we'll slightly revisit the small signal model for a BJT. Uh, now, uh, what I'm going to consider instead of current flowing through R pi, we will see that the between base and color, base and uh, emitters, emitter terminal here, there is a capacitor C pi. And this is a small signal model that's valid in active region. Okay, for a BJT, this is active region. And the capacitor CBC is between base and collector. C pi is a capacitor between base and emitter. Now C pi is nothing but the diffusion capacitance because your capacitor, your p-n junction, that is base emitter p-n junction is forward biased. So when you have a junction which is forward biased, the capacitance is called diffusion capacitance. And base to collector is a reverse biased junction. So this CBC is actually a depletion capacitor and that depends on voltage. Okay. So again, we, are, we mainly discuss only two capacitors here, which is CBC and C pi. So these are the two main capacitors we will be, at least in the analysis that we will be carrying on, we'll only consider these two capacitors for a BJT. Now, because of the presence of C pi, you can see that at very high frequencies, uh, it's going to shunt out R pi. I mean, you, you, I mean, you have R, R pi and C pi in parallel. So at very high frequencies, this is just going to look like C pi. And by, by now we know what this high frequency is. You just have a parallel RC network. So obviously after 1 by R pi C pi, frequencies much greater than 1 by R pi C pi, this parallel RC is just going to look like a capacitor C pi. So in that case, we will actually have a frequency dependent current gain. So how do we derive that? In a similar way, how did we derive it for a MOSFET? We'll assume IBE as the current flowing from base to emitter, between base and emitter. So then IBE times this impedance, which is R pi by 1 plus SC pi R pi will be VBE. So your collector current is simply GM into VBE. So that will be GM R pi by 1 plus SC pi R pi. So this term GM into R pi for a bipolar junction transistor is simply the current gain. So R pi, you can look up the definitions. We have already discussed this in great detail. So R pi is do IB upon dou VBE, the whole inverse. 
So it's the incremental change in the base current for an incremental change in the base emitter voltage. So that's the definition of uh, R pi. And we know the product of Gm into R pi is the current gain of a BJT beta. So finally, we will get an expression for the frequency dependent current gain as a ratio of the collector current to IBE and that will be simply beta by 1 plus SC R pi, uh, C R pi C pi. So if you plot it as a function of frequency, this is a simple first order transfer function with a DC gain at beta. So you can obviously see beta of 0 is simply equal to beta itself and it starts reducing after a frequency 1 by R pi C pi and it reaches a value of 1 of the unity gain frequency where the current gain of the BJT becomes equal to 1 will be at Gm upon C pi. It's very similar to MOSFET. When MOSFET it was Gm upon CGS where CGS is capacitor between gate to source terminal. Here C pi happens to be the capacitance between base and emitter region. So that's it about the small signal model. So very quickly to summarize, uh, I have shown both the small signal model of uh, MOS and BJT together here so that you can appreciate how similar they are. And uh, so we will be using some results, some well-known results that we had developed for BJTs in MOSFETs as well. So that is the motivation behind uh, this current amplifier model. So finally, we also discussed two very important results. For a MOSFET, you can treat it, the current gain has a pole at DC and for a BJT, the current gain will also be frequency dependent and it has a pole, it's, it's a first order, uh, both, both the uh, BJT and MOSFET, uh, they are like single pole systems. If the current gain can be seen as a single pole system, the current gain transfer function um, can be seen as a single pole transfer function. For MOSFET, the pole is at zero and for a BJT, the pole will be at 1 by R pi C pi. And the unity gain frequency is Gm by CGS for a MOSFET and for a BJT, it will be Gm upon C pi. So this is the frequency where the current gain becomes equal to 1. So that's it. I've laid the foundations necessary for the analysis of single stage amplifiers. Uh, in the next lecture onwards, we'll start with our uh, single stage amplifier configurations like common source, common gate and common drain and we'll, we'll uh, discuss the frequency response of those amplifiers.